Hello ladies and gentlemen, yes, Zeke here again today with the suddenly renamed Proxy Forge to do a support tutorial with Sorority here, who I'm teaching how to support by supporting this Virtus Praetor bike. Um, or this Virtus Praetor proxy bike, I should say. Definitely distinct. Um, so first things first, you have to orient it. I always like to actually enter the numbers manually. And this one is going to have a bit of an odd orientation because you want to get the ideal angle to make the most difficult parts the easiest possible things to support. So for me, the most difficult parts appear to be these wingtips here, the edges of his boots, and um, his legs and knees, and pretty much everything in here. And as such, it's going to have a bit of a weird orientation. I'm going to flip it on its front and kind of support it backwards like this because there's actually not all that much weight to support from here, and I think they'll be able to do a good job of that. So first thing you do is you head to prepare, raise it by 5 millimeters, and then search for islands. Make sure that your accuracy is always set for real, and if you're going to be printing at high resolution, I always make sure that I am working on the Sonic Mini at 20 microns, so that it detects all the islands that there are. Unfortunately, that makes the search take quite a long time, so now I can talk about the process of supporting. So when you support an item, you always want to start by placing the heavy supports that will allow the item to print. Ignore all the details. The first supports placed, the first 30 or so, should allow the file to print nearly completely. What you'll miss is all the details. You'll get melted belt buckles, you'll get wings that aren't quite fleshed out, the rivets will be gone. But as long as you have those key supports in place, the file will print, and that's the important thing. After that, you then start filling in the details. So the, um, the structural supports, with a few exceptions, will mostly all be, will all be heavies or mediums, although it is possible to support with lights and even ultralights, which are tips that are down to 0 0.08 millimeters. Or 0 0.08, yes, that's correct. Um, I generally don't go any lower than that, although I have successfully gone down to 0.05 millimeters in the past. So, as you can see, I have 673 islands. The fortunate thing is a lot of these islands will actually be fake islands that I don't have to support. But unfortunately, a lot of them will be real, so let's get started right away. I'm going to immediately break my rule and start supporting with lights because I need to get this eagle done right away. It's an important detail that will be noticed if it is missing and would definitely ruin the print if it was missing. So um, what I'm doing here is something that I like to call chandeliering, which is supporting one point from several different angles in order to make sure that none of these supports fail. As it prints upwards, it will start pulling in different directions, but if you have a chandelier support like this, then it can't pull in any of those directions. Hitting Alt-R here just to straighten that support out a bit, and Alt-R again to straighten it out, just so I get that nice chandelier effect, and I might as well straighten this out as well, and why not that while I'm at it. Okay, so continuing on with the lights, I'm going to just get a couple of more supports on this guy, where I don't think they'll show up or leave any mark, or if they do leave a mark, they will look natural. That's an important note. Always think to yourself, if I'm leaving a mark, what is that mark going to look like? and will anyone notice it? So now back to the actual heavy supports, the step one that I said. Um, orientation is a very hard topic and I can't fully discuss it in the time that I have in this video. So you can see I'm still creating that chandelier effect and now you have to think to yourself how much weight does this have to hold and how much weight can this hold? So it can hold up to about here and then these start joining it, or these two supports down here start joining it in order to add more support and to hold more weight. And the chandelier effect also allows it to stabilize itself and carry a lot more. But I prefer to have a couple of light supports just up here to stabilize further. And then how long do I think this will hold? Probably about to here. I'll try to go on a flat surface. Always try to impact the model at 90 degrees or else your support will end up um, being much larger than it actually looks. So right now this is a 0.25 support, but if I pull it down, suddenly that support starts growing, or the support tip location starts getting bigger. So avoid doing that, because at that point you're just fooling yourself and using very large supports. Um, because it's at the very bottom, I'm going to continue to support this bird, 
because I think it's such an important detail and if I cover it up I won't be able to actually get it later. So just keeping the supports along the edge. There are a lot of fake islands here as you can see so it's your job to be able to pick them out or to have to pick them out and decide where an actual support is needed and where it's the program is freaking out because the detail has been sculpted in a way that the program doesn't like. Um, also keep in mind that these are eraser tips. Anything that they touch is going to go away. So sometimes it's good to adjust the tip diameter. Um, you can do that anywhere, one of two ways. You can adjust how I just did there, or you can hit the space bar if you have the pro version, hit the tip, grab the square, and then you can adjust the diameter like this. This is actually a faster way, but it is a newer feature, so I'm not as used to it as some of the other ones. So these missiles can probably all just be um, gotten by a single light support. They don't have to hold that much but I do need to get a single support down into this little awkward area. So I used a mini support. You do that by holding Alt and Control. I'm just going to walk it up here a bit, and then I'm going to increase the base tip. So increasing the base tip diameter does one very specific thing. It allows the support to snap off instead of leaving a string. The string will work as a support, but it won't come off easily, and you have to scrape them off with like a putty knife. Kind of an unideal solution. So, um, another thing you could do if you have, so I modified a support that I went back to light, so I don't have this expanded base tip anymore, but if I select this and then place the support after selecting that, it will actually copy the previous support selected. So that's a very quick way of changing supports on the fly as you, as you go. Also, if you're using ultralight supports, it's an easy way of getting the ultralight supports, um, from one place to another without having to reset all your defaults because you only get three different support settings to play with. And then the exact same thing here, I maybe even could have mirrored this, but actually I couldn't have because mirroring would not work in this situation. Make sure that that isn't touching anything that it shouldn't. And this as well. Make sure that it's actually on the corner. This is not a perfect program. You have to catch its mistakes or else it will make those mistakes. One more support right there. Um, turn that down, get the tip even a bit smaller. And I think I am actually done with this bird despite the kind of thousand supports that it says I need. Just in case though, remember these all have to hold weight and suddenly this is going to be pulling, this whole bike is going to be pulling down this way as it tries to print. Oh, sorry, pulling up this way as it tries to print. <laughs> so it needs a tiny bit of support to hold it up as that goes. So let's go ahead and place two lights where they won't be noticed. Right there is one, and right here is another one. Okay. So now, I am almost entirely done with the things that I think need a heavy support. Um, the rest of it, if you watch the white line, it prints up from locations. So there are supports that are needed and there are definitely heavies and mediums that are needed, but most of this will already print. Now, w well, not really, but um, if it wasn't for the weight of the thing, most of this would already print, but the lights that I'm about to add will actually support the weight the rest of the way up. So let's go ahead and start doing that. Um, using mini supports is a very useful way of getting supports into places where you don't want to, or you can't actually reach. And the other useful thing is that you can kind of re-sculpt using them a tiny bit in order to make them look a bit better. Although you should always go ahead and hit Control 1 after in order to reset your supports to the regular lights or else what just happened to me will happen to you. So let's get another one here. This does ruin a bit of the detail but you know what, actually I will change that so it doesn't, I was going to say it doesn't ruin enough of the detail to actually matter. And these are a bunch of fake islands, so we've already probably passed about 200 fake islands, so I'm assuming this is actually a 230 support model, or island model, not a 650. So never be too intimidated by the initial island count, just look to see how much of it is absolutely BS, and then you can from there make a judgment. So I'm going to need another one of these mini supports. You know, I don't actually... Yeah, I say I don't need to adjust that one, but I'm going to anyways. Perfect. That should be fine right there. 
Control 1 sets your support to light, Control 2 sets it to medium, Control 3 sets it to large. Um, another couple of little shortcuts is if you hold Control and then click on two locations, you can actually create these types of supports. And then if you hold Control Shift, you can actually take the support from there and place it in other locations by cloning it. So you can actually use this to build quite a bit of height quite quickly and to get to several areas very fast. Um, although you do have to watch out because these are now leaning, if you hold Control and double click, that will allow you to place a support, a support beam that will support the support for them. <laughs> so as you can see here, this is being held up by the chandelier format that I was talking about. And then you can just keep on going. Sometimes you won't be able to quite get the support exactly where you want it, so you can just place it down and then adjust it from there. And then, um, of course, adjust the tip so you're not doing anything crazy. Lower this a bit more to get a better angle. I don't think I'm going to get much better here, but it's actually kind of upsetting. and I can't really expand these tips, so this is kind of a necessary evil. This might be enough to bind, but I think I've left enough space there for it not to bind. Oh, and my always on top screen region has gone away. There we go. Just to keep track of the chat in case there are any questions or comments. Um, the reason this is in the format of a tutorial is actually because it, I find that I answer more questions when I have somebody to answer questions to. So let's add a couple more of these supports here. Um, I'm going to also try to get in on the side here to add a tiny bit of like a weight holding capacity, but that doesn't seem to be a, an immense possibility. Yes, it is. There we go, and then this can raise. Resin is actually surprisingly good at bridging. That will actually function in order to relieve some of the stress from these supports. Just don't count on a bridge to hold much weight, is my number one piece of advice. I'm going to reset to normal short supports so that I can just do some rivets. And then I'm going to very quickly place a support in the middle here. Place one mini support. Say that I want to click through on this. Um, expand the tip diameter a lot. Oh, wrong tip diameter. Watch out for that. Go to base and expand. Okay. One second. There we go. Base tip. Expand the base tip diameter. Control shift. You don't want to make the angle too steep, so I'm using another one instead. Somehow I lost my support, so I'm just going to get it from there. And then those are all done. It's going to create a little chandelier on his knee, and here's a missed support. Remember, this program is not perfect. You always have to keep an eye out. Um, if you want, you can use UV tool to check that you have kept an eye out and that you've gotten everything. It's a very useful application, although I tend not to use it with, um, with my hobby stuff. put that there and once again little chandelier style for the foot and probably a couple of medium supports on each of these foot pads now oh, that's a horrible medium support let's try that again but better perfect now getting in here is going to be a bit difficult I think I might actually have to use mini supports to re-sculpt this entire area to make it print but that is all right. You know, this time I'm going to put a medium here and then just chandelier it with lights. And then build up from there. So you can see here's another small mist island. Fortunately, Lychee is pretty good at going around corners, so you don't have to do too much adjusting of your angle. Put a little chandelier on that, readjust this so that it's actually touching the edge, and get this support, expand the tip. 
Basically, it comes down to the same thing over and over again, done well and with precision. <laughs> really isn't that much special to it. Other than constantly thinking about the weight of what you're supporting, and constantly thinking about how to not leave a mark on the model. Those are two things that should be always running through your mind. Is this leaving a mark? And how is this being supported? There we go. So these will actually print because they're straight flat, I think. Yeah, as a single island. But I'm going to try to kind of re-sculpt anyways in order to... Yeah, there we go. That'll do the trick. This will not. Sometimes hard to tell if you're going up or down here. And this... You know what? Actually, this is completely unneeded. Because look, that will all print in one layer, this will all print in one layer, this will all print in one layer, this will all print in one layer. So actually this entire section I don't need to I don't need to support. These are all fake islands. Fantastic. So let's move on and finish up the hand. Gonna want a smaller tip diameter here. I don't like damaging these rivets or anything. The main thing is I don't like damaging anything, which is why I do what I do. Let's go ahead and make this. Oh, I decreased the base tip instead of the regular tip I just noticed. Increase that. And decrease the regular tip. There we go. And decrease the regular tip. Two supports there. You can often, using these mini supports, create a long line support instead of a straight support in order to support something long and narrow. Um, very useful to use a thinner tip for that. Can definitely save you a lot of model marking. You might notice that I put a lot of um, supports directly on the edges of things. It's because a small break on the edge of something looks natural, whereas any other larger break will not. So this is a bit awkward. These are all real islands, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the tip diameter down to like 0.7 base tip is still quite high, and I'm going to try my best to actually get all of these islands, which might and might not be possible. Um, either way, I don't think this would cause a, pr a print failure or a broken screen, because it, it the model itself would pick up the resin after a while, after very few layers. It's when you get like 20 or 30 layers in a row that it becomes a problem, and when the model doesn't pick it up again. So let's go ahead and grab that Aquila. Oops. Sometimes it's a bit difficult to tell exactly where the edge is. Don't worry too hard about it. And those are not islands. That is, that is, and this is. Perfect. Now, back to regular light supports, and I do notice that this right here is a real island. Let's go ahead and add a three-way support to that because I heard it is not gay in a three-way. Um, go ahead, make your choice. I'm not sure I have a lot of music stuck in my head today. Apparently one of them is Little Mermaid. So you might notice that after I've done the structural supports, I've mostly switched over entirely to lights. That is very common, because after the structural supports, you shouldn't need anything but lights. The rest of the model should be able to be supported by literally as little weight as possible, since the model builds up from the initial point the entire model counts as one giant support, like a 80 millimeter support instead of a 0.25 millimeter support. I'm gonna need something a bit more delicate here. Go to the regular tip, turn it down to 0.14 and you know what? I'm actually going to go ahead and save some resin here by doing this this way. Perfect, and you know what, while I'm here I might as well put one of these over here, it's going straight through the model, so you can just bring it out of the model easily enough. Now I'm going to need to get something on his little um, leg pads here, but I should be able to just sneak in, and if I push this in a bit and pull it back then I get a better angle of attack, and I can start maybe imitating this and going onto these rivets here. Actually, there's not much more left for me to do, other than maybe put one of these in here, 
and pull it out, pull it up, pull it back, here and down. Now it says it's almost touching something, but I can see very clearly that it's not. Once again, not a perfect program, so you might as well just keep on going. These aren't real islands, but that right there is. Fortunately, I can get something back there, turn it into a regular light instead of what I have, and move on. It would have actually been very helpful if this man had not been on the bike, because I could have used the mirroring tool, since this is the same on both sides, in order to actually do this. But as it is not a perfectly symmetrical item, the mirroring tool will have a bit of a fit and not like what I do, so that is not an option today. Just trying to get mini support in there. Perfect. One more of these and one more mini support. Not sure when I hit spacebar in there, but apparently I did. By the way, if you want to adjust the tip of any support without it being locked to the model, hold control and that allows you to free adjust it in space which can let you get very, very interesting supports. Like, let's say I couldn't get into this area. Instead, I could make a light support here. And then I could take the tip, hold control, move it over, move it up, or move it sideways, move it up, and expand it until it's one diameter. And then I could go back to light soaps, Expand it. Oh, oh no! Worst tutorial ever. Okay. Expand the tip diameter to one. Click off. Hit light. Then create a mini support. That goes to there. Then you can expand the base of that. And if you wanted, you could take that into an even wor weirder region by moving it upwards. So now I have this really interesting structure here that I can build off of. Um, holding control is the bracing button, so you can actually add a brace to thicken this up to a point. And now I have, oh, sorry for hitting my mic, a very interesting structure to work with. Since that's not doing anything spectacular, I might as well make it do something spectacular and have it support all of these little islands over here. Any questions so far? Because I am done explaining for a bit. Okay, I might as well do his chest plate and belt now. There does seem to be a way to get in there. Here seems to be a support that I have accidentally placed. Do watch out for those and clean them as you go if you have them. I was hoping I could get a support like that. So this might leave a small mark on his belt. I don't think it will. Uh, I'm trying to actually use a fair amount of light supports here because I do have to carry a decent amount of weight in his chest for a decent amount of time before it gets taken over by the model itself. So I'm being a bit more generous than I normally would using a bit more double and triple supports in order to stabilize things. Yeah. But a lot of lights can easily do the work of, of of a heavy, so. And as you can see, again, I'm really trying to get that flat angle. I'm trying to preserve all the hard edges. Um, if you rotate the model on multiple axes, the supports will stop working. But if you want to rotate or mirror the model after the supports are done, you can export it as an STL, then import the STL and mirror it from there. If you mirror it beforehand, I would highly recommend exporting as an STL and then re-importing before you actually start work on it again. Is my answer to that question. Excellent. So, as you can see, making a lot of good progress here. Don't know exactly what that is, but I see no reason not to put a support there since it will be hidden by a head anyways and we are getting into the territory of the fakes again.
Okay, here's another good use for um for a mini support. Let's go ahead and make one right here. And then pull it way back, way down, way back, back here. Expand it to one. Give it some support. And then we can use this as a gantry in order to get this light here, which I will again expand the base tip. Support it, support the support, and then carry on. My wayward son, there'll be peace when you are done. Okay, need one more of those, I think. Oh, no, that actually reaches without clipping, so I will leave it as is. Except I will uh, give it another support like this and support that support. This is a bit of a complicated model, all things considered. So, in all honesty, fairly happy with how it's going so far. Um, this is going to be a bad angle, but it's going to be a mostly hidden part. So I don't mind the slightly bad angle in order to preserve a bit of the detail there. This is a real island, surprisingly enough, and that is a rivet. And then I have this again right here with just a couple of lights. This I see no choice in how to support it other than to put it right there. Yeah. No one's ever going to notice that. And there that is unfortunately real so let's go ahead and create a brace and then create a support off the brace remember to expand the base tip if it's too long at that point add a bracing and then a bracing to the bracing for stability and expand the base tip again and with that I am not done but I am mostly done I do still have these two wings to do, and um, I have to check to see on the, in the model if I've missed anything major, but I think I have largely finished the product or the project. Oh, yeah, all this. There we go. I knew I was missing one big heavy piece that needed to be held. I'm one big heavy piece that needs to be held. I don't know. That sounds horrible, so I said it. Uh, let's do it this way and support that. And this can be a chandelier to a couple of heavies. Because this is actually going to hold up a fair amount of the weight as well and do a good amount of stabilizing in its own right. Can't help but notice a little bit of gearage. Oh yeah, that's what we already checked. That's the other side of what we already checked. So it's just these two wings and then I'm done. After this, you could use UV tools to double check your work. I would highly recommend it, but again, when I do hobby work instead of uh, professional work, I tend to get a tiny bit lazy. And when I say a tiny bit lazy, I guess I mean I still put a lot more effort into this than a lot of people. Not every, or maybe not everybody, but a lot of people. Okay. Anyways, this was the episode. I j for something this tall, I will generally go to manual after this and hit bracings once after I'm finished. And that will add bracings to the whole thing, add a ton of stability. And that's everything. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please do like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.